Okay, the way Bo distribution is a statical tool tells us how often wind of different speed will be seen at a location with a certain average mean wind speed. Knowing this helps us to choose a wind turbine with the optimal cut in speed. So, cut in speed is the wind speed at which the turbine start to rotate and generate usable power and the cutout speed, the speed at which the turbine hits the limit of its alternator and can no longer put out increased power output with further increase in wind speed. The shape of the wave bowl distribution is controlled by a variable called the shape factor K. So figure below show the wave bowl distribution for value of K from 1 to 4. So this is an example of Weibo K1. Uh, this is for shape K4. So this Weibo frequency distribution. Energy generated can be estimated by E generated equals to P average output multiplied with number of hours. So in practice, the capacity factor for WEG should be more than 20% and for the offshore should be between 30% to 40%. So advantages of the WEG generation system. Wind energy is fueled by the wind. So it's a clean fuel source. Wind energy doesn't pollute the air like power plants that rely on combustion of fossil fuels such as coal and natural gas. Wind turbines don't produce atmospheric emission that can cause acid rain or greenhouse gases. Wind energy is a domestic source of energy produced in Malaysia. The nation's wind supply is abundant. Wind energy relies on the renewable power of the wind, which can't be used up. Wind is actually a form of solar energy. Winds are caused by heating of the atmosphere by the sun, the rotating of the earth and the earth's surface irregularities. Wind turbine can be built on farm or ranches thus benefiting the economy in the rural areas where most of the wind, uh, the best wind sites are found. Farmers and ranchers can continue to work to uh, work the land because the wind turbine uses only a fraction of the land. The challenges, wind power must complete with conventional generation sources on the cost basis. Depending on how energetic a wind site is, the wind farm may or may not be cost competitive even though the cost of wind power has decreased dramatically in the past 10 years. The technology requires a higher initial investment and the fossil fuel generator. Good wind sites are often located in remote locations, far from cities where the electricity is needed. Transmission line must be built to bring the electricity from the wind farm to the city. Wind resource development may compete with other use of the land and those alternative use may be more highly valued than electricity generation. Although wind power, power plants have relatively little impact on the environment compared to other conventional power plants, there is some concern over the noise produced by the rotor blades, aesthetic visual impact or sometimes birds have been killed by flying into the rotors. Most of the problems have been resolved or greatly reduced through the technological development or by properly seating wind plants. So wind turbine type and classification. The type of wind turbine we have horizontal axis and vertical axis. Uh, let's go through the horizontal axis first. So this is what we call horizontal axis means the axis round which the blade rotate in the horizontal. The horizontal axis wind turbine, HAWT, have the main rotor shaft and electrical generator at the top of the tower and must be pointed into the wind. So the generator, the motor, okay, the gearbox, the wind direction, so the blade must pointing to the wind uh, direction. So the small turbine are pointed by a simple wind vane, while large turbine generally use a wind sensor coupled with a servo motor. Y A W motor, yaw motor. Most 
have a gearbox which turn the slow rotation of the blade into a quicker rotation that is more suitable to drive an electrical tractor. So this wind can be rotated okay, to point to point it into the wind direction. So by using YAW drive and YAW motor. So this is a figure of last size wind turbine. So this is the swept area of the blade. This is the rotor diameter. And this is the hub height. Echo with gearbox and generator. So the gearbox and generator are located here. And this is the tower. Since a tower produces turbulence behind it, the turbulence is usually pointed upwind of the tower. Turbine blades are made stiff to prevent the blade from being pushed into the tower by high wind. Additionally, the blades are placed at considerable distance in front of the tower, which is 10 D, which 10 times of the diameter of the blade, and sometimes tilted forward into the wind a small amount. So they have to have two type of horizontal wind turbine which is this is upwind okay so the wind come in this direction and this is downwind machine which is the wind come from the back which is at this direction so the upwind horizontal as this type wind generator is the type most commonly used with stand alone system downwind machine have been built despite the problem of turbulence mass weight because they don't need an additional mechanism for keeping them in line with the wind and because in high wind the blade can be allowed to bend which reduce their sweep area and thus their wind resistance since cyclic that is repetitive tabular may lead to fatigue failure most horizontal as this wind turbine are upwind machine so typically is this Direction eh? construct with this direction, which is upwind direction. This is small size wind turbine using mass sky, tensioner, and ground anchor. So the mast of steel tube, alloy tube, or wood with the guys are unsuitable grazing cattle or small children. Then use a telephone pole on third buried. The three equally spaced guy 130 degree, which assist raising and lowering the assembled mass. A high mass will require intermediary guying. The top guy hold the mass upright and the lower guy prevent it from buckling. Okay guys, usually galvanized steel wire protected by plastic sheet and fitted with end timbs balls. Do not use a material that will stretch or deteriorate. Tensioners to tension the guys but not over tension. The guys should be snugly taut but not drum tight. Ground anchors, this should be eye bolt fixed in the ground. If soft earth, then required concrete blocks. Gravel or clay soil required auger type anchor and rocky ground may need drilling and expanding rock anchors. Base, this is to carry the weight of generator and mass only. Fixing depends on ground state but metal packs driven into soil are often sufficient. It is often convenient to make a pivot arrangement for the base in line with one guy while you anchor to it rising and lowering. So lightning, directly earth all metal work to protect from lightning. Bury output cables minimum half meter depth between mass and the battery position for better protection than suspending in air. Either run cabling through PVC conduit or use a type specified by burying a by local building or electrical codes. So advantages of this system is variable blade P 
pitch which give the turbine blades the optimal angle of attack. Allowing the angle of attack to be remotely adjusted give greater control so the turbine collect the maximum amount of wind energy for the time of day and season. Because this is a tower type, it's difficult to go up and adjust manually so it allow to remotely adjust it. The tall tower base allow access to stronger wind inside with wind shear. In some wind shear side, the wind speed can increase by 20% then the, output power, uh, the power output by 34% for every 10 meter in elevation. So this type of turbine have high efficiency since the blade always move perpendicular to the wind receiving power through the whole rotation. In contrast, all vertical axis wind turbine and most proposed airborne wind turbine design involve various type of reprocating action requiring airfoil surface to backtrack against the wind for part of the cycle. Backtracking against the wind leads to inherently lower efficiency. The face of a horizontal axis blade is struck by the wind at a consistent angle regardless of the position in its rotation. This results in a consistent lateral wind loading over the course of a rotation, reducing vibration and audible noise coupled to the tower or mount. So remember back, so this system, you have two types. Horizontal wind turbine with upwind and downwind. So the disadvantages, the tall towers and blades up to 45 meters long are difficult to transport. Transportation can now amount to 20% of equipment cost. Tall horizontal axis wind turbines are difficult to install needing very tall and expensive crane and skilled operators. Massive tower construction is required to support the heavy blade, gear box and generator. Reflection from tall HAWT may affect side loops of radar installation, creating signal clutter, although flattening can suppress it. Their height make them obstructively visible across large area, disrupting the appearance of the landscape and sometimes creating local opposition. For downwind variants suffer from fatigue and structural failure caused by turbulence when a blade passes through the tower wind shadow. For this reason, the majority of HAWT use an upwind design with the rotor facing the wind in front of the tower. Horizontal axis with the bind required an additional yaw control mechanism to turn the blades and nestle toward the winds. In order to minimize fatigue load due to weak turbulence, with the bind are usually side a distance of 5 rotor diameter away from each other but the spacing depends on the manufacturer and turbine model. So cyclic stress and vibration. Cyclic stress fatigue the blades, excel and the bearing resulting in material failures that were a major cause of turbine failure for many years. Because wind velocity often increase at higher altitude, the backward force and torque on the horizontal axis wind turbine blade peak as it turns through the highest point in its circle. The tower hinders the airflow at the lowest point in the circle, which produces a local dip in force and torque. This effect produces a cyclic twist on the main bearing of the horizontal axis wind turbine. The combined twist is worse in machine with an even number of blades there where one is straight up when another is straight down to improve reliability 
Tethering hub have been used which allow the main shaft to rock to a few degrees so that the main bearing do not have to res resist the torque speed. The rotating blade of a wind turbine act like a gyroscope as it spivers along its vertical axis to face the wind. Gyroscopic precession tries to twist the turbine disc along its horizontal axis. For each blade on a wind generator turbine, precessive force is at minimum when the blade is horizontal and at maximum when the blade is vertical. The cyclic loading effect, the design of the mechanical element, structure, foundation of the wind turbine. So other than this body, using your motor to rotate the uh, rotor to face the wind direction, this one also can be rotate. The blade can be rotate. So each blade or the wind of the turbine processing force is at the minimum when the load blade is horizontal. Okay, but this one is already maximum when the blade is vertical. So this is another type of turbine which is vertical axis. Vertical axis wind turbine or VAWT have the main rotor shaft arranged vertically. So this generator gearbox, all of it uh, placed on the ground but for horizontal axis or the generator motor are placed on the top of the tower. The key advantages of this arrangement of vertical axis uh, the turbine does not to be pointed into the wind to be effective. Okay, but this one, you need to point the blade to the wind. This is advantages on site with the wind direction is highly variable, especially on the urban area. With a vertical axis, the generator and gearbox can be placed near the ground so the tower doesn't need to support it. And it is more accessible for maintenance. Drawbacks are that some design produce for setting top. It is difficult to mount vertical axis to bind on tower, meaning that they are often installed nearer to the base on which they rest, such as the ground or a building rooftop. The wind speed is lower at lower altitude, so less wind energy is available for a given size to bind. Airflow near the ground and other objects can create turbulent flow which can introduce issue of vibration including noise and bearing wear which may increase the maintenance or shorten the service life. However, when a turbine is mounted on the rooftop, the building generally redirects wind over the roof and this can double the wind speed at the turbine. If the height of the rooftop mountain turbine low tower is approximately 50% of the building height, this is near the optimal for maximum wind energy and minimal wind turbulence. So advantages of this vertical axis wind turbine, uh, a massive tower structure is less frequently used as VAWT are more frequently mounted with the lower bearing mountain mounted near the ground. Design without your mechanism are possible with fixed pitch rotor design. The generator of a VAWT can be located near the ground, making it easier to maintain the moving part. Vertical axis wind turbine have lower wind startup speed compared to horizontal axis wind turbine. Typically, they start creating electricity at 6 meter per hour or 10 km per hour. So, vertical axis wind turbine may be built at location where taller structure are prohibited. Vertical axis wind turbine situated close to the ground can take advantage of location where mass hilltops, ridge, uh, ridge line 
and passes fast uh, tunnel the wind and increase wind velocity. Particles as is wind turbine may have a lower noise signature. The disadvantages of a vertical axis wind turbine that use guy wire to hold it in place put stress on the bottom bearing as all the weight of the rotor is on the bearing. Guy's wire attached to the top bearing increase downward thrust in wind gusts. Solving this problem require a superstructure to hold a top bearing in place to eliminate the downward thrust of gas event in guy wire model. So the stress in each blade due to wind loading changes sign twice during each revolution as the apparent wind direction move through 360 degrees. This reversal of the stress increase the likelihood of blade failure by fatigue. While vertical as these wind turbine components are located on the ground, they are also located under the weight of structure above it which can make changing our part very difficult if the structure is not designed properly. Having rotors located close to the ground where wind speed are lower due to ground surface drag, vertical as is wind turbine may not produce as much energy at a given site as horizontal as is wind turbine with the, sum, with the same footprint or height. 11. Over speed control if the turbine spin too fast, there is a possibility of mechanical damage to the part of the turbine, so the generator is rated to perform at a particular frequency, and it is important to keep the turbine spinning as close as possible to the optimum frequency. Some large wind turbine incorporating variable blade twists allow efficient operation over a wide range of wind speed. As the wind generators spin faster and faster, there are large force produced which could cause the machine to self-destruct. In order to prevent this, there are mechanisms built into the design of machine that only come into play at high wind speed. This can be various design and fall into three basic categories. So this is what happens when the this, this wind is greater than cutout speed. So number one, to stop the rotor, we have this mechanical braking. It's a brake similar to that found on the many automobiles which applied by centrifugal force as the rotation speed of the generator reach cutout speed. This will generate a lot of heat and in a wind site where the machine is operating close to its cutout speed regularly, the wear of the brake may be unacceptable. Large horizontal assist machine, such as the 300 feet diameter machine in large scale wind farm, must be stopped completely in high wind. Feathering. Feathering is when we cut out speed is reached, some data will feather. They may just feather the individual blade by rotating the blade to reduce its angle to wind and they may employ a tail vein similar to the water pumping windmill and turn the whole blade assembly out of the wind to reduce rotation speed. Okay, but they are not completely and force the wind turbine to stop. Number three is variable axis, a variation of the feathering style in the variable axis generator. At low speed, the blade act like a downstream horizontal axis machine and have a very large swept area. This allows them to take advantage of light wind. Then the blade are aerofoil in cross section as they begin to rotate, they apply lifting force to the body of the generator. As the machine lifts the effective swept area of the blade, exposed to the wind decrease and the rotational speed of the blades is nearly constant over a wide range of wind speed. At maximum rotation, the machine will be horizontal, making a vertical axis machine. A tail plane acts as a buffer to wind gusts to lift the machine to prevent damage to the blade 
and to counter rotational torque applied to the machine if the wind drops suddenly. The machine will continue to produce output even in cyclonic winds. So that is the advantages of the variable axis. So this is the example of the variable axis. We are lifting the force using the wind vane. So the force will be like this. Best efficiency, which is uh, WEG system analysis. Best efficiency or Best law is a theory about the maximum possible energy to be derived from a wind turbine. Best law was deployed, uh, de developed in 1919. By German physicist Albert Betz, according to Betz's law, no turbine can capture more than 59.3% of the kinetic energy in wind. The idea of maximum theoretical efficiency and maximum, also called power coefficient of a wind turbine, is the ratio of the maximum power obtained from the wind to the total power available in the wind. The factor of 0.59 is known as the Bell's coefficient. It is the maximum fraction of the power in a wind stream that can be extracted. Tip speed ratio. The tip speed ratio lambda or TSR for wind turbine is the ratio between rotational speed of the tips of a blade and the actual velocity of the wind. If the velocity of the tip is exactly the same as the wind speed, the tip speed ratio is 1. The tip speed ratio is related to efficiency with the optimum varying with blade design. Higher tip speed result in higher noise level and require stronger blade due to less centrifugal force. Generally, can be said that slow-running multi-blades wind turbine rotor operate with tip speed ratio like 1 to 4, while fast runner use 5 to 7 as tip speed ratio. The TSR is given by dividing the speed of the tip of the turbine blade by the speed of the wind. For example, if a 20 meter per hour wind is blowing on a wind turbine and the tip of its blade are rotating at 18 meter per hour, so the tip speed rotation is 80 minus uh, 80 divided with 20, so equals to 4. So this type is a slow running multi blade wind turbine. So the optimum tip speed ratio depends on the number of blades in the wind turbine rotor. The fewer the number of blades, the faster the wind turbine rotor need to turn to extract maximum power from the wind. A two blade rotor has an optimum tip speed ratio of around 6. A three blade rotor around 5. And a four blade rotor around 3. If the tip speed ratio is too low, for example, if poorly designed rotor blade are used, the wind turbine will tend to slow or stall. If the tip speed ratio is too high, the turbine will spin very fast through turbulent air, power will not be ultimately extracted from the wind, and the wind turbine will be highly stressed and a risk of structure failure. Capacity factor. So this is the equation that we learned before. So, capacity factor is the actual power generated multiplied with duration. So, this is actually the energy, actual energy generated divided with rated energy. So, rated energy is equals to rated power multiplied with duration. So, WEG is economical viable if the CF at least 20%. For offshore, it's between 30% to 40%. Sitting wind energy generators, WEG should be as close as possible to batteries to reduce power losses in the cable. 
To optimize the output from the wind turbine, WEG should be installed at twice the height of the obstacle. As a rule of thumb, a wind generator should be installed no closer than at least 10 times the height of the obstacle. On the downwind side, 20 times the obstacle height is preferred. So this is the example. This is the poor design, poor side. So the region of high dis disturbed flow. So this is the, this is the preferred side, which is 20 times of the height of the obstacle. Be aware the, uh, that vegetation grows and that a suitable site now may not be suitable in two years' time. Slope in the land may cause increase in the wind speed. Just in the vicinity at the slope, so take advantage of this. Gentle slope enhance the wind speed, but abrupt slope can cause turbulence. So this is example of the increase wind speed on a gentle sloping slope. This is the bad design, a bad location. Uh, this is a good location, which is the height is two times of the building. So this is the bad design. This is the good design, which is two times of the height of the obstacle. Uh, this is the bad design. So monitor and record wind profile at the potential site over a long period, at least one year. If not possible, then record over a shorter period, example one month, and compare with the nearest weather station data. Compare the data for the same period. If your site has more wind than the weather station for that month, then it will almost certainly have more wind all the time. Realize that an anemometer doesn't care about direction or turbulence when it's measuring average wind speed, but your wind generator certainly will. Avoid turbulence. This requires taller tower. Take note of vegetation, landscape, building, which are planned for the vicinity of the potential site. These are the potential sources of obstruction and turbulence. Wind generator can be noisy. The noise can come from the blades, gearbox, brush gear, or wind whistling past the tower, poles, or guys' wires. Before install, always ensure that there are no objection by the community to the noise produced. It is important to consider wind weight effect to design optimal layout of wind turbine. When wind passes through a turbine, it slows down as the turbine uses the energy within the wind to produce power. This way is carried, out, uh, carried over to any wind turbine situated directly behind other wind turbine. To avoid energy loss by weight effect, distance of the wind turbine in the prevailing wind direction has to be at least 10 times of the rotor diameter and the distance of the turbine in the cross direction has to be three times of the rotor diameter to avoid weight effect losses. Okay. So to avoid the weight effect, so this is three times and this is four times of the diameter. So electrical circuit, this is example of 350 watt with turbine. So here we have stop switch on the ground. And then power resistor and series connection. And this is charge regulator to control the charge for the battery. So we have two set of battery of 24 volt. This is a 24 volt system where the battery is, uh, is connected in parallel. Example is 400 wind turbine, 100 watt wind turbine. Same thing, we have stopwatch and the emitter, fuse, and the battery. So maintenance, periodic maintenance on bearing and gearbox to make sure well lubricated. Activate mechanical or electrical braking system before attempting to lower a turbine for maintenance. It's very dangerous. 
all nuts and bolts should be retightened to manufacturer specification. If you remove any nuts on the nylon, variety fit new one, do not reuse them. Check oil leak on the gearbox, replace any leaking oil seal and top up the gearbox oil specified by the, manu by the manufacturer. Check guy wire from twisting, tension and broken strand. They should as uh, oscillate if struck sharply with palm of the hand. If they appear loose, retention to the manufacturer's specification. Check any mechanical brake is serviceable. Check the blade from crack or chips which will cause the turbine to be out of balance. Some blades having leading edge tape which should be replaced regularly. So that's all for this chapter. Thank you.